after Drake just 20 v won the whole rap industry, I decided to myself, why not make a video explaining how each and every one of these beef actually happened, and why the hell everybody hate this nigga Drake. So first, we can start with Future, cause believe it or not, Future and Drake had some early animosity towards each other starting back in 2011, when Future dropped his single, 21 Tana, which had Drake featuring on it. When they went to shoot the music video for the song, Drake never showed up, and when Future was asked about this, he said he felt that it was a slap in his face from Drake. And what I see, why, why I choose you to get on my record out of all people, so many people from Atlanta wanted to get on this song. And it's just like, a real, basically a slap in my face because they like shit, you should have did it for somebody from Atlanta who was going to get in the video, who wanted to be part of your video. And you go outside Atlanta and you try to get something different. I now fast forward 11 years later, Drake would release his collab album with 21 Savage, Her Loss. But unknown to everyone, Drake was actually supposed to do What A Time To Be Alive too with Future. But instead of him doing that, he just scrapped and threw away the album just so that he could release the album with 21 Savage. And because of this, there would be rumors that Future wasn't so happy with Drake. This beef wouldn't only stem from one controversy, because there would be another reason why Drake and Future aren't on good terms. And that would be because of a woman. This woman would go by the name Diana, which also correlates to future song Magic Dawn One, which in bracket says Princess Diana. The rumor is that Drake and Future were messing with the same girl, and this can be confirmed with another song by Drake, What Will Pluto Do? With people originally thinking that this song was a shout out to Future, but later people came to find out that this was actually a diss towards Future, with the line saying, What Will Pluto Do? He fucked the hoe, so I fucked the two. Drake also proceeds to throw more shots at Future from the song More M's on her loss, saying, What happened to that nigga claiming OVO? We traded him. And Future is well known to rap the OVO brand. All in all, this is the one I feel the most sad about, because Future is my favorite rapper. And him and Drake, in my opinion, was probably the best rap duo of the 2010s. And they just correlated so well on a track together. So hopefully, they could pass things up and start making music again. Next is Metro Boomin. In earlier years, Metro Boomin was actually fond of Drake, with proof of this coming in multiple tweets of Metro seemingly praising Drake. It also looked like they were friends behind the scenes, because Metro would produce multiple songs for Drake, such as both remix with Gochi Man, Knife Talk with 21 Savage, and multiple songs off of Drake and Future's collab album, What A Time To Be Alive. But after this, some tension would start to brew between Drake and Metro Boomin. The story starts in 2019 with Future teasing what a time to be alive too with Drake on his Instagram story and would even confirm that it was already finished. Ah, uh, what's that? We gotta cook that up. That too. It's already cooked. <laughs> yeah, Top no. secret. Yeah, not better. Top secret. FVG OVO. But despite the video and rumors, the album would never release due to the fact that Drake decided to scrap the album because he was already dropping a collab album with 21 Savage called Her Loss. This would then create some animosity between Future Metro and Drake. After the release of the album, Drake would actually diss Metro on one of the songs, More M's, because there was rumors that Metro was actually pillow talking to girls about how much he hated Drake. And in the song, Drake says, niggas ain't got love for the boy so they fake it, crack a couple jokes to some bitches on some snake shit. Couple months later, Metro would drop his album Heroes and Villains, which had artists like Young Thug, Future, The Weeknd, John Legend, Don Tolliver, Travis Scott, and others. But no Drake. The thing is, Drake was supposedly on one of the tracks called Trance, but because of the beef, Metro would take Drake off the song. Someone on Drake's team would then allegedly leak the original version of Drake on the song, and after this, Metro would clap back by leaking the original version of Knife Talk with Drake and 21 Savage. Metro would also even be seen liking the tweet that said taking Drake off of trance was the right decision. A couple months later, DJ Academics and Metro Boomer would be beefing. And through this beef, DJ Academics would confirm that Drake and Metro Boomer didn't like each other. Metro Boomer then went on Twitter to share his feelings about how he felt that her loss was winning awards over heroes and villains despite the fact that Heroes and Villains was a better performing album than her loss, but he would end up deleting it right after, which then led to this viral video of Drake on a stream responding to Metro. And to the rest of you, to the rest of you, the non-believers, the underachievers, the tweet and deleters, you guys make me sick to my stomachs, fam.
Honestly, if you guys want to look in my eyes, you guys want to do something? You guys, that's what I thought. No, that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Drake and Metro continued to go back and forth with Drake leaking his diss song, Push Ups, where he told Metro to shut up and make some drums. Metro then responded to this by leaking the reference track to Jumbotron shit popping, showing that Lil Yachty was actually the one that wrote the song. Up next is The Weeknd. Well, how Drake and The Weeknd actually met was because while The Weeknd was an unknown artist on the come up, he would post music for free on the internet. And this was how he was able to get the attention of Drake. Through this, they started to grow a relationship together, and Drake started to realize that The Weeknd was a good artist. So he asked The Weeknd to sign this label. But The Weeknd denied him, saying he wasn't trying to sign to a label because he wasn't trying to be under another artist. But even though he didn't sign to the OVO label, Drake still asked The Weeknd to help him with some music. And by helping, he meant giving him some music. Because The Weeknd would then give Drake six songs, which was half of the songs he was going to put on his House of Balloons trilogy albums. Those six songs would actually end up being the songs on Drake's Take Care album, but many people don't really know. Drake would also feature The Weeknd on his album, helping him to get his name more into the mainstream. Now after Drake released Take Care, which would end up becoming his best performing album which earned him multiple awards, remember when The Weeknd said he didn't want to sign to Drake because he wasn't trying to sign onto another artist? Well the real reason The Weeknd declined was actually so he could sign to Republic. Just two months after signing with Republic, The Weeknd would release his trilogy album which would become massively popular and would end up making him one of the biggest artists in the world. Drake didn't take this so lightly, saying this on Twitter with fans knowing who he was talking about right away. Drake felt a little betrayed because he felt that he was the reason for The Weeknd's popularity by putting him on his album, but The Weeknd never acknowledged him by signing to his label. Sometime later, Drake would then drop his single 5am in Toronto, where he would diss The Weeknd saying, cause I show love and never get the same out of people. Guess it's funny how money could make change out of people. Some nobody started feeling himself. A couple somebody started killing themselves. A couple album drops and those are still on the shelves. I bet them shits would have popped if I was willing to help. But believe it or not, there would be more to this beef than music. Because back in 2017, around this time, The Weeknd was in a relationship with the model Bella Hadid. But after a while, they would end up breaking up. Soon after, Drake was seen at a party with Bella Hadid, flirting with her. And later, it would be revealed that they would end up hooking up, which would obviously upset The Weeknd. After this, The Weeknd would continuously diss Drake in multiple songs. But although Drake and The Weeknd seemed to be beefing to the public, behind the scenes, it looked like they had already passed things up and they were friends again. Within 2019, Drake sang this on his single, War. And the boy that sounded like he sang on Thriller, you know that's been my boy. Yeah, we just had to fix things. Family, six things. We can't split up. Also saying that he regretted not speaking to The Weeknd for seven years on a Rock Radar interview. My biggest regret would maybe be that we probably wasted seven years not communicating with each other when we had something, something beautiful going on, you know. But it looked like that agreement was just one-sided because The Weeknd would still come out on Future and Metro Boomin's album, which was basically a whole album dedicated to this and Drake with the verse on All To Myself that goes back to his situation with signing to OVO, saying, I thank God that I never sold my life away. Next up is ASAP Rocky. So before all this beef even started, ASAP Rocky and Drake were actually good friends, with ASAP Rocky even saying in an interview that Drake was the first rapper to notice him, that he would forever owe Drake. I'm the only person that put on for me when I ain't had nobody was Drake. I'm talking about Drake was the first person wow to put on like before anybody. He didn't want to sign me. Yeah. He didn't want, it was like, yo, that's raw talent, yo. Like, I, you gotta shine, yo, I'm gonna I'm see to it. For, I forever, forever owe Drake, what thankful. Was Drake would also take Rocky and unironically Kendrick Lamar on his Take Care album tour. And Rocky and Drake would start to become good friends with videos of them being seen together backstage talking good about each other. Drake would also feature on one of Rocky's biggest singles, Effing Problems, with also Kendrick Lamar and Kanye West featuring on the song. Which is funny because everyone on the song is beefing with Drake. This beef actually didn't happen because of music, but actually it started because of a woman. And that woman would end up being Rihanna. Around 2015 to 2016, Drake and Rihanna would supposedly be dating, but would end up breaking up. 
And then years later, around 2021, ASAP Rocky and Rihanna would become official. But the thing is that around the years Drake and Rihanna were dating, ASAP Rocky and Rihanna would also have some type of friendly slash flirty relationship. Yet, all seemed well, even up until 2020, with Drake gifting ASAP Rocky at ASAP Yams chain on Yams Day. However, seemingly out of nowhere, Drake would diss Rocky on one of his songs on For All The Dogs, saying, I'm pretty flock old boy, this stuff get really rocky. Drake then goes on to diss ASAP Rocky's girlfriend Rihanna with a whole verse saying, I'm anti, I'm anti. Yes, sex with you was average. Yeah, I'm anti because I had it with you. Rocky would be silent up until 2024, when Future would drop his album, We Still Don't Trust You, saying, Niggas swear they girl the baddest, I just buy the worst one. Niggas and they feelings over women, what you heard or something? I smashed before you burst, son. Flocko hit it first, son. Still don't trust you. It's always us and never them. You drop your latest stuff, funny how it just came and went. So really, this beef really just stems from Drake being butthurt over ASAP Rocky having Rihanna. Basically. Up next is Rick Ross. This beef between Rick Ross and Drake is kind of confusing. Because in the beginning, Rick Ross and Drake were actually good friends. And they were actually amazing collaborators as well, making a ton of hits together. They would start out some animosity towards each other around 2015, when Drake and Meek Mill were beefing. Understandably, because Meek Mill is actually signed to Rick Ross's label. So Rick Ross felt that he had to have the back of his artist. Rick Ross would then make a diss track on Drake. And that was all that really came out of it. And it seemed for the coming years, Drake and Rick Ross would patch things up and were cool again because they continued to drop music together like Money in the Grave and Lemon Pepper Freestyle. It was only until Rick Ross posted a video on his story where he was shown singing Kendrick's verse on Like That in his car. Drake would then reply to this by inviting Rick Ross's ex to one of his shows, giving her the VIP treatment. And Drake then releases push-ups where he dishes multiple rappers, including Rick Ross. Rick then quickly responds with a diss track of his own called Champagne Moments, where he would call Drake a white boy and say that he got a nose job and he got his abs done. Drake then responded back with a conversation between him and his mother. So yeah, that's why I'd say this beef is really kind of confusing, because in the beginning, they seemed like they had some type of beef, but it looked like they resolved it, because they started making music together again, and there wasn't really any clear reason for them even beefing. And finally, we have the most famous beef, Kendrick Lamar. Now the beef with Kendrick and Drake goes way deeper than many people think. Around 2011, Drake would release his album Take Care, which actually featured Kendrick on one of the songs, and would even bring Kendrick to open for him on his Club Paradise tour. But despite this, Kendrick would still go on to diss Drake on a record with Big Sean called Control, where he talks about multiple rappers he has love for, but he still wants to kill them in the rap game with one of those rappers being Drake. A little while later, while at the 2013 VMA Awards, Kendrick would actually see Drake and he went up to Drake to dap him up and tell him that it was just music and it was nothing personal. But Drake didn't take it that way and told Kendrick that he wouldn't be cool with him after he dissed him. Drake then did an interview with Billboard where he was asked about this diss and this would be the first time that he would publicly talk about this diss, saying, went about my day, went and got dinner and kept it moving. I didn't really have anything to say about it. It just sounded like an ambitious thought to me. That's all it was. I know good and well that Kendrick's not murdering me at all in any platform. Again, on another interview, Drake will be asked by Elliot Wilson about Kendrick Lamar, and this is what he had to say. But he's he's <laughs> but he's like, you know, he is the underdog that's extremely hungry, you know what I'm saying? Um and and he's doing his thing really well. Um, and that verse was, he's giving people like moments, you know, like that, that verse was a, a moment to talk about. Um, are you listening to it now at this point in time? Okay. And then it was, it was real cool for like, you know, a couple of weeks. But like, if I asked you, for example, like, how does that verse start? I'm the king. So it, it, it was one of those things. It's like I almost wish he had come in there on that shit because I kind of lost like a little respect for the sentiment of the verse. If it's really fuck everybody, then it needs to be fuck everybody. It just can't be halfway for the sake of the people. But you know what I'm saying? Like for real, that's just how I feel. Drake then released his 2013 album, Nothing Was the Same. And on this album, he would have a song called The Language, where he took shots at Kendrick, saying, I don't know why they've been lying. Your shit is not that inspired. 
Kendrick caught wind of this, and what happened next was on a TDE cipher, which had every member of Kendrick's label rapping. And Kendrick will go on to drop a line dissing Drake. The bitch you cold, yeah, and nothing been the same since they dropped control and tucked the sense of the rapper back in his pajama clothes. Ha ha, jokes on you, high five. I'm bulletproof, your shots will never penetrate. Pin the tail on the donkey, boy, you been a fake. Drake surprisingly didn't respond to this cipher. And what actually talked good about Kendrick while on stage with J. Cole at his OVO Fest concert in 2014. But while I got you here on stage, I just want to say, and while you all got your phones out, I want to shout out my nigga Kendrick Lamar. Shout out to Kendrick. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Kendrick was on my album. We went on tour together. That's one of the hardest niggas alive right there. He's legendary. So shout out to him. He should be standing right there. It's a lot of kings in this shit. You understand what I'm saying? So shout out to Kendrick. And shout out my brother J. Cole one time in the whole drink. Then in an interview a couple months later with Big Boy Neighborhood, Kendrick was asked the question, where does he stand with those people that he referenced in his control verse? And he says that it's all love. Where are you with, at with a lot of the cats now, like the J. Coles of the world or, or yeah. Drake's of the world? Where are you guys at same now? Same place. Same place. Mm -hmm. It's all love from the that. moment I did the verse to after the verse. You know what I mean? I think hip hop is, is a sport, so you're going to have these little spits and spats. And it's all good because personally, I respect these dudes as, you know, as, as people. You know what I mean? So outside of that, it's really nothing. Specifically, what? So at this point, everyone thought that Drake and Kendrick were friends and they were on good terms. But unfortunately, soon enough, the hip hop community would know that that was far from the truth. Because after Drake released his 2015 album, If You're Reading This Is Too Late, he would reference the time that Kendrick dissed him on control and then proceeded to try and top him up at the VMA Awards the next month. Kendrick would respond once again with another diss track on his 2015 album, To Pimp a Butterfly. And on the song King Kunta, he would reference Drake having Ghost Riders, which was revealed by Meek Mill doing their beef. Kendrick and Drake would proceed to go back and forth on different singles with each other. But after 2017, when Kendrick dropped his album down, he would seem to go on a long hiatus from music, and it seemed like he just disappeared altogether. In May 2022, Kendrick dropped his long overdue album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. And on the album, he would have two songs where he sent shots at Drake, with one of those being on the song Silent Hill telling Drake that he couldn't hide behind his money anymore. Then, Drake would release his collaboration album with 21 Savage, and on one of the songs named More M's, Drake would diss Kendrick by telling him that his album had flopped. Then, surprisingly out of nowhere, Future and Metro would release an album, and on that album, Kendrick would be featured on one of the songs, like that. And in the song, Kendrick would have a first purely dissing Drake. After this, Drake would respond with his push-ups diss track on Kendrick. And after this, this would be the beginning of the back and forth beef between Kendrick and Drake. And it was all history after that.